Another source of radiation, the source is the fast particles of the atom. We have fast electrons, fast neutron, and fast proton. Usually, fast electron is still in the practice, but those, they don't penetrate. But we use them for superficial tumors, in the skin, for example. Or sometimes when you give, in, in, in a breast cancer, you give um, field radiation to the breast area, sometimes you need to do a booster dose to the bed of the tumor or to the scar, so that we can use the electron. Now, research do, for doing the, uh, some effort to use the other uh, uh, fast particles like the neutrons and protons. Neutrons, those are, when they are heavily accelerated, probably becoming effective. They use them to treat resistant cases of soft tissue sarcoma and uh, sometimes in melanoma. We said that the melanoma is not affected by the radiotherapy, but there are trials to use fast neutron to treat melanoma in a special technique, some more high shoulder technique. But uh, in common practice, these, radio, these fast particles only commonly use the electrons rather than the neutrons or protons. Now, what is the mechanism? How the radiotherapy works? The radiotherapy works simply when you expose a cell to the, uh, to the radiotherapy, there will be ionization of water formation of oxygen-free radical and destruction of the cells by stimulation of programmed cell death and apoptosis. Sometimes there is a genetic alteration in the cell and it will remain status quo with this genetic problem, but when it comes to divide, okay, it will fail to replicate like normal cells. And this is why, for example, one of the causes of poor wound healing is exposure to radiation. Okay, because the, the, the healing elements or the cells which are supposed to uh, multiply and uh, make the healing process will fail. Or, or sometimes it causes what is called direct damage to the DNA itself. So that the whole mark is a damage to the DNA, a death of the cell, either at the spot or when they try to replicate again. The uh, radiotherapy having a lot of complications and there are several developments in order to gain the advantages of radiotherapy and to minimize the side effect of the radiotherapy. And the patient usually before one, two or three weeks, they should go into proper planning and diagnosing and localizing where is the tumor and how the ports should go to the tumor. And the, uh, the, uh, the goal of this is to give a maximum radiation to the tumor and a minimum radiation to the surrounding tissue. So that the patient will go uh, through a machine like this. They call this a simulator. The patient, it should go into a simulation. This is a machine, I, this, this, that, that one old and this one recent, had all loaded by an X-ray they can do an X-ray, diagnostic X-ray, or even CT scan. The patient should go through this machine, and several films should be taken, either plain X-ray or nowadays using CT scan, to demonstrate where is the tumor, and to adjust how to deliver the uh, radio act, uh, radiation to those people. So that those are called simulators. Sometimes they need to make a cast or mask to the people in order to protect some areas which could be exposed to the radiotherapy. So that proper radiotherapy, when there is adequate planning, a precise localization to the area, knowing what are vital structures which could be affected, probably this will reduce the complications. So that this is this needs a quite yeah, good experience and need sophisticated machines and so on. And after uh, making the uh, proper simulation and the preparation of the patient, the patient will go into the uh, treatment. Before going to the treatment, there should be a mark on the area which needs to be treated. As you see that 
these marks are the field of radiation, okay? And we don't only uh, radiate the breast mount, but the breast area, you see? And even it may extend to supraclavicular area. These marks should be present all the time uh, with the patient, while the patient taking the radiotherapy. And they are localizing the area of the tumor, as you see, or this, the bed of the tumor sometimes, so that in order to make the uh, X-ray going precisely to that side, okay, giving a maximum dose of radiation to that side. Nowadays, because those marks uh, are able to be erased or to disappear, they use tattoo marks, okay? You may, you, you may see patients having tattoo in the breast area doing breast surgery, so that you will know that those people had radiotherapy uh, before. As you see that after planning, the X-ray, uh, the radiation should come in this way. This is one single port, so that if we use this direction all the time, uh, probably many tissues in the field will get damaged beside the tumor. So that the people try to divide the ports, one lateral and one medium, okay? So that sometimes two ports of entry, sometimes three, sometimes four. Okay, and from uh, when you divide the direction of the uh, or the when you divide the direction into medial and lateral, you will give half of the dose required from the lateral side and half the dose from the medial side. Or if you go through four ports, uh, probably you will divide the uh, in, in, into four parts. But all of these will end and converge at the site of the tumor at the end. And this is the basis of what's called gamma knife. You know gamma knife. This is three, uh, uh, it is an X-ray machine uh, having a lot of ports, having a lot of ports, yeah, so that the patient wear a head cap, and this head cap okay, is fenestrated. Countless number of holes and the radiation will go through these holes. And all of them will converge into the deep-seated legion, so that there is a very big dose, okay, given to the site of the tumor, and the, this is basically for the treatment of deep-seated lesions in the brain. So that when they use multiple ports, while the, the, while the, radi while the radiation goes through the brain tissue, it will give a minimal effect on the surrounding tissue rather than giving that in, in one single directed way. So that you see that it is sometimes from the lateral side and from the medial side. So that those are the ports. Now, how much we give radiation and what, uh, what is the uh, unit of radiation? The unit of radiation in the past called RAD. RAD. And nowadays, they use the term gray. This is a uh, radiobiologist, British radiobiologist. His name is Gray. So that he, uh, the people use his name to give the unit of radiation. Now, each gray, each gray composed of 100 centigrade. Okay? So that the basic unit is the gray and it is divided into 100 centigrade. And each centigrade is one rad in the past terminology. Is it okay? So that the people should go into a uh, calculated dose of radiation. Usually we don't exceed 6,000 rads or 6,000 centigrade or 60 grade. 60 grade. Okay? And this is usually the maximum tolerated dose by the tissue. Now we cannot give all of this in one go. It needs to be divided. And the div division of the doses called the fractionation. Okay? Now if we Sometimes, 
to reduce to reduce the effect of radiation, they do what is called hypofractionation. It means that in spite, in, uh, instead of giving the dose in one day, one time, they can divide it one in the morning and one in the evening. Uh, and sometimes they, uh, they do a su a hypofractionation. Superfractionation is much convenient to the patient regarding the tissue toxicity, but it takes more time and more logistics for the uh, patient to go and to, uh, to receive his radiation twice daily. The minimum, the minimum, uh, the minimum uh, period between the two fractions is six hours. We cannot give it less than six hours. So that probably in a private setup, in calm setup where our, the number of patients are not uh, that big, the people use hypofractionation. Uh, sorry, hyperfractionation. But in busy areas, sometimes they don't use the conventional one to other day. And in this way, they can double the number of patients receiving the radiation. But usually this. Uh, there are studies saying that it gives the same results, but actually the hypofractionation is associated with more morbidity to the people. Now, uh, as we said, it is not without complication during the therapy. Uh, there are immediate effects uh, and there are late effects. For example, if we take uh, radiotherapy effect in the tumors of the head and neck. Those people usually, they suffer from uh, ac acutely from ulceration in the mouth, stomatitis, difficulty in swallowing, okay? And the people uh, <coughs> later on, they may develop what's called xerostomia. Xerostomia is very right. bad complication. The patient having no saliva, and the patient unable to, to talk for a time, unable to eat because there is no saliva and used here all the time required to use artificial saliva so that this is a bad thing and those people when they try to do dental uh, procedures probably there is a problem of healing in those people and usually some cases associated with what is called by osteoradionecrosis which is a difficult situation causing pathological problems in the mandible and fracture in the mandible Beside this, probably there is a loss of hair when you give brain radiation, there may, the patient may have cataract and so on. Uh, in, in other areas like the breast, usually there is a bear-like effect acutely. There is erythema, there is a swelling, there is a, a blister sometimes will occur and probably this may be se uh, severe enough to stop the radiotherapy uh, for a while. And the late problems of the radiotherapy in the breast area, actually it is related to what is called thromboangitis obliterans and fibrosis of the tissue. The consistency of the breast interfered with due to the fat necrosis. The patient may develop edema in the breast and edema in the arm as well. Uh, and all of these are a, a, problems. Nowadays we try to avoid as much as we can removing the lymph nodes in the front, uh, draining the arm. And now the people start to inject uh, radioactive material or uh, blue dye in the limb and they can demonstrate the lymph nodes okay, by having the discoloration or radioactivity and try to keep these lymph nodes because those lymph nodes are not draining the breast, they are draining the arm. Till now, our conventional way is to remove the lymph nodes according to the standards, but sometimes we take these lymph nodes draining the arm and leaving the patient to have uh, lymphedema. As you see, these are uh, edema and erythema. Sometimes it is difficult to differentiate between recurrence of the tumor and the fat necrosis related to the uh, radiation. This is lymphedema, as you see, long term. Edema of the breast, I mean. So that this is the whole story about the radiation. 
you will stop.